How do you know if your church is stagnating? What are the signs of a declining or stagnating church? Well, I think firstly, you look at your metrics. Is declining attendance and weekend services and small groups, is that a sign? Yes, I think it is. Baptisms, no baptisms happening, no one coming to Christ, low levels of serving, all of these metrics are giving you a sign that things are stuck, things are stagnant. But I think also there's the vibe, the atmosphere. If there's high levels of criticism, real focus on problems, a a lack of engagement, and a real inward focus in a church, all these things are sending you a signal, hey, we're facing stagnation, we're stuck, we're declining, we're in danger of even closing. And because all the consequences of that are a diminished impact in the community, You lose relevance, the the church isn't even known in the community, and inside the church there's low morale, no disciples are being made, there's even the threat, God forbid, of the church closing. And if you don't face the brutal reality, it will only get worse. You can ignore the signs if you want, but you'll do that at your peril, and your church ultimately could close. I remember when we closed one of our church plants, it had been going A few years have grown to over 100 people, a set-up, pack-down situation. Church decided to lease a building. And in the move from a set-up, pack-down to a lease building that passes the church leadership, lost focus. They really got into the building vibe and, and they really lost focus on the people. And as a result, the church stagnated and then horribly declined to the point where we actually had to close it. What a sad day that was. So I I think if your church is stagnant, you need to come not just with pastoral ministry to your church, you need to come with pastoral leadership. You need to take the bull by the horns and face the reality of what you're dealing with and step in there and become the pastoral leader your church needs. So let's look at six proven steps. I've seen this in our own church I've seen this in churches I've consulted with, six proven steps to revitalize a stagnant church. The first one is important to get educated about change management as a pastor. There's a real simple change management principle that I call melt, reshape, and freeze. Just like you take an ice block out of the freezer, put it outside at room temperature, it melts and becomes fluid. It's not hard anymore. Then you can reshape it and then put it back into the freezer in a different shape. So this tells us that if you want to bring change to your church, you have to warm your church up to it. You have to plant seeds of change. You have to focus the church. You have to highlight the fact that there is a problem. In other words, people mightn't even think there's a problem with your church, but as you begin to tell them the metrics, the vibe, the feel, the atmosphere, people will go, yeah, I know I look around on Sunday, there's not many people here, there's less people here, my my friends have left for another church. In other words, you begin to face the reality. Now, you may sometimes need to take the ice block out of the freezer and put it in the oven. In other words, bring some real heat and that might require a consultant, a coach, a change agent from your movement or someone outside who comes along and really holds up a mirror to the church and says, hey, you really must face this. Then you make decisions that shape you into a different place where you decide, hey, every second month we're going to run a major event to reach our community and bless our community in some way or another. You create a new program, a new activity, a new focal point, a a new policy. You reshape it and then you set it in motion. You put it in the freezer and it just becomes part of who you are. You have reshaped your church. So I think learning about change management is really important for pastors as they run through these proven steps of helping a stagnant church get revitalized. The second one is do a a realistic and genuine assessment of your current situation. Do a SWOT. You know what a SWOT is? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, sit around your team, with your team, with a whole heap of paper and, and whiteboard and talk it all through. What are we good at? What's, what are we strong at? What's our weaknesses? Where are we not really doing well? What opportunities face us at the moment and what, what are threats to us? You can gather also feedback from your congregation with a survey. Run a couple of surveys with your leaders, with your staff, your board, your team. 
Get as much information, even if you want to go out into the community and get an assessment of your church from the community. So the community can kind of work out, hey, they can give you some feedback of, oh, that church, never heard of it. That sort of feedback is confronting, intimidating, daunting, but but really helpful. So you need a genuine assessment of your current situation. The third step, proven steps to revitalizing your church is to develop a clear focal point, a rally point. What are you going to focus on? Your Sunday service, your small groups, serving, next gen, facilities, finance, whatever it is, choose that focal point. Now, you also may be thinking, you know, look, my church isn't stuck, but my small groups are stuck or our finances or our facilities are stuck. They're stagnant. They're not doing well. So maybe you can take this whole uh, teaching and actually apply it to a department of your church. I remember when we did that with our small groups years ago, our small groups were stagnant. They weren't making disciples. They weren't doing well. So we went away, we did a retreat, and we thrashed it around for a couple of days. What are we going to do? And we created this massive focal point over the next year or two, a huge rally point. We are going to entirely change our small groups, change the name, call them connect groups, change locations, put a bundle of them in cafes, change the way you train leaders, change the, the, the meeting times, all sorts of things were thrown up in the air and said, we're just going to reinvent them. I think small groups actually need this every few years in the church, but you can actually apply these principles to an area of your church. But whatever your focal point and rally point is, let me give you a tip over communicate what you want to achieve and the benefits to your church send more emails than you think you need trust me not everyone reads all your emails you send from the church the person who writes them they're the only person who reads them all to be honest that's the truth send more emails than you think are necessary make more phone calls than you think are necessary make more sharp really clever announcements than you think necessary talk to more people talk it up Hand out flyers. Remember flyers and brochures? Hand out a church newsletter. It'll shock people. What's this? A church newsletter. Haven't seen one of these for years. Just do something different to communicate. Hey, we have got a real focal point here that we are absolutely geared towards. Now, I want to tell you also uh, in, the, in this episode today, in this whole teaching today, uh, about something that I've got for you in the Grow a Healthy Church hub now the hub is a resource that we provide to church leaders it's a fabulous fabulous resource that you can subscribe to and there are all sorts of roadmaps in the hub now what's a roadmap a roadmap is a step-by-step -step guide that leads you through an area of your church it can be church growth church finances it can be getting people serving can be, be your own sustainability as a church leader it could be your succession plan we have seven roadmaps in the hub and they're step-by-step -step guides now i have a roadmap in the hub that is brilliant for revitalizing churches or revitalizing a church department so let me let me just share with you um let me share with you the actual hub let's have a look at this here we go here's the hub here um now this is the roadmap that i really want to share with you today because this can really help you for revitalizing your church or a department of your church. It's called uh, in the hub, how to build a simple church strategic plan. I'm a fan of simple strategic plans, not pages and pages, very simple. And in the roadmap in the hub, you'll find that there are short training sessions. Here's the first video, eight minutes long. How to articulate your purpose and values. You can listen to the audio if you prefer. You can download a summary, PowerPoint slides. Step two, determine your target audience. Who are you trying to reach with this plan? Um, assess your current church strategies. We talked a bit about that, uh, looking at your current reality. Assess the resources and capabilities. And you can see these are just short step-by-step -step trainings you can watch with your team. Sit around on a big TV, watch them all together. This will really help you in a revitalization process. You can set goals, develop strategies, create a communication plan, evaluation, and then the top six problems with strategic plans. Okay, that's the hub and the strategic roadmap that will really help you 
uh, get things together there with revitalizing. Now, let's talk about step four in the proven methods and steps to revitalize your church. Really encourage and empower unity amongst your leadership. The board must be on board with this, your staff, your key leaders, department leaders. Make sure you've communicated strongly with them where you're going. Be very clear with them. Get a real sense of a, a coalition, a, a collaborative, a, a group that's working together. Before you even go fully into your church with this whole deal, make sure you've got your team on board. Make sure there's that sense of, yep, we're unified. We're all moving in the same direction. We're all speaking from the same page. We've got the same language. We've got the same vision. We're going to hunt this thing down as a team. Without that, your congregation will struggle to get on board. The fifth step is to engage your congregation and get them on board. Get in with the key stakeholders. Get in with the naysayers. Get in with the people that you know you know are going to oppose any new idea. Talk with them. Have coffee with them. Have meals with them. Make sure you engage the congregation. Don't just kind of make an announcement and go and hide and hope that people get it. Don't just rely on your team. But pastor, really lead the charge here. Engage and over-communicate with your congregation. And step six is make sure you evaluate and celebrate your progress. Because I think as you get little wins, small wins, whether it's your small groups or your growth of your church or your next gen, your facilities, your finances, when you get a small win celebrated. I was on a coaching call this morning with a pastor and they said to me, hey, we've just had this kind of small win in our finances. It's not huge, but but it is kind of big for us. And I said, awesome. How good is this? Let's take a moment to stop and just be thankful for that. Celebrate your progress, but also evaluate your progress. How are we going? The milestones that we set when we did our simple plan, how are we going with getting into that? The successes. Are we making sure we have enough parties around those successes? Because you must maintain momentum as you go along with revitalizing your church. So check out in the description below, there's a link to the hub. Check out that simple strategic plan roadmap. I know it'll help you build a healthy church.